Uh, hello, once again, uh, welcome to uh, this lecture on integration. Um, so we are continuing with our, our lecture on integration again. Uh, in, the, in our last lecture, we covered um, uh, integration of trig and uh, hyperbolic functions. We looked at how to substitute um, trigonometric or hyperbolic functions into radical expressions, reduce them or simplify them into um, uh, expressions we can easily integrate. Okay, now in this one, I want to look at how you integrate um, rational functions, and then we'll look at the reduction formula, how to derive a reduction formula um, to, to do integrations. Okay, so um, once again, you've, you've learned um, about right, rational functions. So you, you will need some knowledge of rational functions to do this. A rational function is an expression of this form t of x over k of x. These are polynomials, if you like. And if the degree of the numerator, right, if the degree of p of x is greater than uh, or equal to the degree of this, then what you do is that before you do the integration, you perform a long division, right, to simplify the rational function before you integrate it. Okay, so for this, if this is x to the power four plus x plus something, and this guy here is, if you like, you know, x squared plus two or something like that, then do a long division and reduce it. Um, sometimes to um, the denominator may contain irreducible quadratic factors, right? Uh, quadratics that you can't easily factorize. And so what you have to do is use, you know, um, all the techniques of partial fractions that you have learned to, um, to write the rational function in partial fractions. And then you can integrate each of the, um, each of the uh, parts or each of the fractions uh, because then they, they are easier to, um, to integrate. Uh, we'll do examples of this. So I'll just remind you um, about a few things on partial fractions <clears throat> if you have forgotten uh, before we do some examples. So in other words, if you have something like this and this guy is irreducible, right? Then you can complete the square, okay? Sometimes you have to complete the square of the quadratic expression here um, in order before you can do substitutions and uh, integrate the rational function, okay? Okay, so let's look at, um, let's uh, just remind ourselves of some uh, partial fraction techniques. This is a revision. Um, hoping that's a revision for you. Uh, so if k of x is a product of linear factors, some of which are repeated like this, then remember that what you do is that you can write this expression to be a over x plus one. Because this is cubed, you need a b over x minus two, you need a c over x minus two squared, and then finally a constant over x minus two squared. These are constants because this is linear, x minus two is linear, okay? Then once this is done, you can multiply both sides by uh, the denominator here and then um, solve for A, B, C, and D. If you do that, you should get this. So you can try this to see if you, uh, if you remember your techniques of partial fractions. Okay, good. Um, sometimes you have repeated quadratic factors like this where the denominator, instead of being linear, now these are quadratics. Okay, it's a quadratic. So what you do is that um, you say, now instead of using uh, constants, because it's quadratic, you have to use a, a linear expression here. So I have ax plus b all over x squared plus one. And then because it's squared, I need another linear factor, cx plus d all over x squared plus one, all squared, okay? If it was cubed, I will need another one, right? ex plus f all over, then the cubic one, okay? Uh, once again, multiply through by the denominator uh, and solve for A, B, C, and D, and you should get this. So you can try it just to refresh or review uh, expressions, uh, partial fractions. Um, if, Q of, if Q of X, the denominator has irreducible quadratic factors, uh, for example, an expression like this, where this is irreducible, right? You can't find factors of 13 that will add up to give you negative six. Then you have to complete the square. Right, so write x squared minus six x plus 13 to be equal to this, x minus three squared plus four. Okay, so basically we are going to solve this. 
Um, once you do that, this, you can now write it as this and then make a substitution for this guy. So now let u be x minus three, which means x is u plus three, differentiate both sides, then the x is just u, okay? So now this thing here now becomes two times x, x is given by this minus one all over, this is u squared plus four, okay? And this you can simplify to two u plus five all over u squared plus four, the u. You can break this up into two fractions, right? This I can write as the u all over u squared plus four the u, plus pull out a five and this is one over u squared plus four, okay? Now this is straightforward because the derivative of the denominator is just the numerator, right? If I differentiate this, I'll get two u, which is up here, okay? So this is just long u squared plus four. Uh, if, if you are confused about this, you can further make a substitution for the denominator and you see that your result will become ln of this. Okay. And here, note here, uh, this is where we apply the trick substitutions, right? I can go back to a couple of my slides back. I showed you that if I have integral one over x squared plus a squared, it becomes one over a tan inverse, right? So let's, let me just show you quickly. Um, is here. Remember this expression, the x over x squared plus a squared is equal to one over a tan inverse of x over a plus c. So when you have an expression like this, you can easily write it straight away that the solution is this. That's what I'm using here. So let's go back uh, here. Okay. So, you know, I have one over u squared plus for the u. This is like my x now. So this I can write as, you know, five over two, right? Tan inverse of u over two plus c, okay? So this can easily be integrated. This can be integrated using the trick. And then you can, um, you can replace your u's, right? The original variable was x. So we said u was x minus three. So I replace u with x minus three, expand it, and I get this. And then this becomes tan inverse of x minus three over two plus c. And that is a solution to it. So if you have irreducible quadratic factors at the bottom, right, as, as uh, at the denominator, you just use complete the square and then uh, make a substitution. Okay, let's try this one. This is, I think, much simpler. I have this expression. Um, this can easily be reduced. Uh, it has factors x minus two, x plus two. So I can write it as a over x minus one plus b over x plus two, all right? Multiply through by the denominator and then you get this. Solve for a and b. You have a is two and b is negative one, which implies that I can write this expression finally as two over x minus one minus one over x plus two. So instead of integrating this, I'm going to integrate each of these. Okay, so integrating this, I can integrate this guy. I'll just get two ln x minus one minus, if I integrate this, I'll just get ln of x plus two plus c. And that gives me the solution to, uh, to that. Okay, so um, remind yourselves of uh, partial fractions, um, completing the square, all of those interesting stuff. And then you can do this kind of um, integrals. Okay, oh, I have uh, one more here. Okay, so this is the case where the power of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator. So do a long division, right? So for this expression, do a long division, and then you will get, end up with this x squared plus x plus two plus two over x minus one, okay? So instead of integrating this, I now integrate this simple expressions. Integrate this, you have x squared over three, x cubed over three, x squared over two, this is two x, this is just two long x minus one plus c, okay? So again, try your long division on, on this and you should get this. Good. Um, Okay, so these are some, uh, some exercises for you to try. Show that if I integrate this, I end up with this. I mean, basically these are all partial fraction stuff. Once you can break this down into partial fractions, then this is, these are much easier. It looks, it looks you know, long, but it's from the partial fractions. Okay, great. Let's, uh, let's finish off with um, how to derive uh, a reduction formula, okay? Um, so you can, you can, you can derive a, a formula, reduction formulas are often general formulas, 
right? Uh, for if you like, if I have the integral of cosine to the power m dx, the m there is an integer, some positive integer. I can derive um, a reduction formula for it so that um, in the formula, if you like, on the right hand side, the resultant expression here has a power, one, a power that is one less. Okay, so if I had a cos to the power five, I have an expression where I need to integrate a cos to the power four, for instance, or cos to the power three. And then I can repeat the process by so doing, I'm able to integrate a cosine to the power five. Okay, so it, it it's a general formula you can often derive and you can then use it to, to, to integrate uh, other expressions. So it's quite neat, uh, you see. So uh, integration by parts can often be used to derive reduction formulas for evaluating certain integrals. Um, so the formulas enable us to express some integrals in terms of integrals whose integrands involve lower powers, okay? So now you have a, you have a problem which has a lower power and that enables you to easily integrate it. Um, so recall integration by parts, okay? If you remember, integral u dv is uv minus integral v du. Uh, if, it is, um, if it is a definite integral, of course you have this limit and you just put the limits on your, on your uh, result there on the right hand side and the left too. Okay, good. So let's, let's just, just show this with an example, okay? Let's, let's try to find a reduction formula for the integral of sine to the n x dx, where n is greater or equal to two, and is an integer, all right? Of course, if n is, um, is one, we know how to integrate sine x, so there's, there's no point. That's why we want to do it for n greater than two, greater than or equal to two. Okay, so how do you do that? To, so to derive a reduction formula for this, what you do is let sine to the power n x dx equal to, split an, a sine x out. So you have sine to the n minus one x, sine x dx. And then you apply integration by parts on this resultant expression on this guy, okay? So let u be sine to the n minus one x and let dv be sine x dx. Then du, if I differentiate this guy, I'll get du as equal to n minus one, sine to the, of course, I have to subtract one from here, sine to the n minus two x, and then I have to differentiate co, uh, sine x, and that gives me equals x dx, all right? Chain rule, it's a power or something. So I'm applying a chain rule here. So if I differentiate this, du becomes this long expression here. To get v, I need to integrate sine x. That gives me negative cosine of x. So I know u, I know v, I know dv, I know du, which implies that the integral of sine x dx will be equal to, uh, remember we're doing this, uv minus integral v du. So I plug in my u, my v, u is this guy, v is this guy, I'm going to put them here, minus integral v is this, du is this long expression, which I'll put in here. If I do that, I will end up with this. I'll end up with this, okay? Good. Now, the right-hand side integral looks complicated, but really it's not. What you can do is that you can use the identity, trig identities to replace cos squared x, all right? Cos squared x is one minus sine squared x. So plug this into here. When you do that, your sine to the n minus two x will multiply the one, and then it will multiply sine squared. See, when you multiply sine squared, the square will take away this negative two here, okay? So it reduces. So if you do that, this expression now becomes, this is the same, this now is split into two expressions because I'm replacing cos squared x with one minus sine squared x. I'm going to get this guy, sine to the n minus two x dx minus n minus one, all right? Sine to the n x dx is sine to the n because this sine squared here cancels this two here and I'm left with sine to the n x dx, okay? Great. Uh, now that we are here, what you can do is that, you see you have integral of sine to the nx, you also have integral sine nx here on the right hand, on the left side. On the left and the right, you have the same expression, so you can combine them. So often you, sometimes you come across these a lot when you are doing reduction formulas. So take this, this expression here to the uh, left hand side and simplify it, and that gives you n 
integral sine to the nx dx is equal to the right hand side, all of these, which is this. Okay. Now you can divide through by this n so that sine to the n, sine to the power n dx is equal to, I'm dividing by n here, I'm dividing by n here, and I get this. So now in this case, you see that we are starting with an expression with the power of n, and then the resulting problem has a power reduced by two, you see? So then it becomes, it becomes hopefully much easier to integrate this. And of course, this can also be applied for any n. So for any n, I can use this expression to find my, the integral of sine to the n, you see? That is, that is one reason why we often want to derive reduction formulas. Awesome, okay. So we're going to use this formula to, to solve, you know, to do an example so you know how we, uh, how we apply it, okay? So if you like, write this on a paper somewhere and then just follow along with the example, okay? Good. So we're going to use it to, uh, to find the integral of sine to the power of 4x dx, okay? The x is omitted, it's an, um, a typo. So it's sine to the power of 4x dx. We want to integrate that which means if you want to apply the formula, our n will be four, okay? So if you go back, wherever you see n on this side, plug in four. So you got one over four here, this becomes a three. This is three over four, uh, four, uh, four minus two becomes two. So now on the right-hand side, we're going to have a sine, sine squared x dx to integrate. So if I do that, I'm going to have this expression here, okay? So now, um, the neat thing is that you can then apply the same reduction formula to this integral here, right? But in that case, our n become, is now two. So use the same formula and put n is two. When you do that, you're going to get this expression here, right? You get negative one over two sine x with x plus one over two, okay? Just the x. Remember this is n is two. So remember if I go back, I put n is two here, this is sine to the zero. So this is like one. So I just have a dx, okay? So it reduces to, uh, to this. So this is now easy to integrate and I get this. So you see, we have been able to, because the power is reduced, it's now easy, easier to integrate what is here. So we have integrated this and we have this. So plug this back in here. And that should give you the solution to the sine, to the integral of sine to the power four. So you plug it in and you get this long expression here. Okay. Uh, if you just expand this, you're going to get this expression plus uh, a constant, a constant is this. All right. So that is, that is the advantage of using, um, of using uh, reduction formulas. Form the reduction formula and then you can use it to, to, solve, to solve other problems. Let's see if I have another example. All right, so that is um, basically it. I mean, you can try to get a reduction formula, for instance, to cosine integral of cos to the power n dx. All right, and then use it to solve a problem, for instance, cos squared x and see whether you get the same solution. Okay, so that is uh, on reduction formulas. I will end these, um, this lecture here. And then um, in, the, um, in our final lecture on this, uh, integration uh, techniques uh, and other things will end with uh, improper integrals. All right, so my, lect my next lecture is going to be on improper integrals, okay? Once we are done with improper integrals, the only thing left about integration will be applications, right? How to, um, how to apply these techniques, all of these that we have learned. How is, does it apply? Um, okay. So I'm going to end this here. Once again, try, try whatever is there. Uh, if you have any problems, of course, you can talk to, to us.